Uh, so Marcus is going to be telling us about Poseidon 2, a faster version of the Poseidon hash function. We actually learned about Poseidon 2 also at ZK Hack because some folks implemented it. So yeah, take it away. So yeah, let's start. So first, this is joint work together with uh, Dimitri and uh, Lorenzo from Ethereum and Ponos. And yeah, welcome. This talk will be about Poseidon 2, which is a faster version of the Poseidon hash function. So let me first give you a very short motivation. So Poseidon, the hash function, uh, some of you may know it, uh, has been widely used in practice uh, recently in the last couple of years. And why is that? Well, it has proven its efficiency in, in many, many use cases, sorry. Um, so it's also implemented in many ZK protocols. And well, uh, the good thing or the nice thing about Poseidon is that it can be represented by a very low uh, number of constraints in, well, most proof systems. Not all of them, but most. And it also has quite good plane performance. Of course, not like SHA-2, but it's good for what it is. However, when designing Poseidon, when we designed it like four or five years ago already, I think, uh, there were some things we completely ignored. So we just focused on rank one CS, uh, so rank one constraint systems, but we just completely ignored, for example, the, the plane performance or other proof systems. And in the last couple of years, we asked ourselves, well, uh, how can we make it faster? Can we even make it faster while still being very close to original design and maybe even uh, just as secure as the original design? And we are going to talk about that in this talk. But first, let me give you a very short recap how Poseidon actually works. So it's essentially a cryptographic permutation. You can see the design on the right side here. And in the beginning, we have these, uh, we call them full rounds, because we apply the S-boxes or the nonlinear functions to the whole state. Then we have some uh, partial rounds. And then we again have these full rounds and these monomial functions for the S-boxes. And uh, the thing, the important thing is that every matrix, so every M, this is a matrix multiplication, is actually an MDS matrix. And all these things, so the permutation then gets used in a classical sponge mode to, for example, build a general purpose hash function or even encryption if you want. All right, so these are the observations we made, and these are the, the most important ones. Uh, these MDS matrices are actually quite expensive. So they're very good in terms of statistical security. This is related to uh, things like the branch number and so on. Uh, but actually, it's, uh, for our purposes, it's some, something like too good. So it gives very, very good security, but higher than can actually be achieved. Um, so our question was, can we find a cheaper matrix, which is uh, more efficient to implement and more efficient to compute, but which still provides the same security level. Um, yeah, and the second observation is then we can also use all of that in a compression mode, which has, done, has been done also recently, for example, in, in Jive, uh, like half a year ago. All right, so first, in a nutshell, what are the changes? Well, you see these uh, the highlighted in blue. We essentially, we essentially exchange the matrices with, uh, with two different ones. So first we have the ME matrix, which is used in the full rounds, and then the MI one, which is used in the partial rounds. And we also add an initial linear layer at the very beginning. I will come to that also in a minute. So why do we do that? Well, in some settings, it can improve the performance by a factor of up to four. It depends, of course, on which state size you have, which prime sizes you have, and so on. And it's also much more efficient in the very classical Blanc, where you still have uh, like a limited number of uh, columns. All right, so how is this done? Well, let me, uh, let me give an introduction to the first to these two matrices. So ME, essentially, we took some inspiration from lightweight cryptography, from hardware, actually, where we try to uh, minimize the number of XOR gates. And this is uh, quite similar to what we, are, what we want to achieve, because if we don't have many additions, uh, then likely we are faster also in plane. Uh, so this ME matrix is exactly uh, that one here. So it's a circulant matrix built by two times uh, this M4 matrix and then just uh, repeated the M4 matrix. And this now uh, may seem very, very random, but it's actually taken from this uh, DL18 paper. And actually what this does is, or what this enables us to do is, uh, we can compute the multiplication by that matrix uh, by using just uh, 12, 12 operations in total. And that includes both additions and also multiplications. So we repeat that for a number of steps for the whole state, and then we do the circulant matrix, and in total we only need 5T operations again. And uh, this also includes uh, additions, and so both additions and multiplications. So we have some number of operations which is linear in the state size, which is of course better than the naive approach where you have uh, a quadratic number of uh, operations in total. All right, so that's the matrix for the, for the full rounds or for the external rounds. Let's call them like that. 
Um, and then we have the matrix, the new one for the internal rounds. So we, take, uh, we took inspiration from a recent permutation, which is called Neptune. Uh, this Neptune permutation uses this matrix quite differently and also has like a different structure also for the nonlinear layers. Uh, but we essentially found that uh, it can be used also in Poseidon, this, this matrix. Um, and the nice thing for the partial rounds is that as a designer, as a cryptanalyst, we, a cryptanalyst, we don't need to focus on statistical security anymore because it's, this is done by something which is called white trace strategy and it's only done in the external rounds. Uh, so we, what we can focus on is actual algebraic security. So we, we are trying to find a matrix which provides dense polynomials in the output and which prevents uh, subspace trails, which essentially allow you to skip an arbitrary number of uh, rounds. And we found that this matrix is, uh, so if you use the right values in the middle, it actually allows you to do so. And it's quite efficient because, uh, as you can see, you just need to like, compute the sum and then just uh, add the sum to each uh, intermediate value, and then you have the new state. So this is even more efficient uh, than, the, than the matrix before. All right, so we also did some additional changes to Poseidon. Uh, so first, uh, since uh, there was this optimized implementation, we will just add the partial or the round constants to the first word in the partial rounds. We now do this directly, so the optimized version is not uh, needed anymore, the more efficient implementation version. And we also add a linear layer to the very beginning of the permutation. And the reason for that is that there have been some attacks in the past uh, which essentially allow you to skip, I think, up to two nonlinear layers. Uh, without uh, increasing the cost a lot of the attack. Uh, so we do this like as, as a precautious measure. Um, but let me emphasize that the original Poseidon, which does not do that, um, is, is not in danger. So it's still safe to use the original Poseidon. Uh, the change is, is very minimal in that regard. And finally, also, we, we propose a new compression mode. So this is uh, very, very old, so to say. Instead of using the sponge function, you can just do 2 to 1 compression or 4 to 1 compression and so on. Uh, more directly by using such a compression mode. And if you're building a Merkle tree, for example, this uh, can help a lot. And uh, finally, a very nice uh, message for all the developers and implementers. So this efficient transformation of the partial rounds is not needed anymore. Actually, it makes the whole thing a bit slower if you do that. And uh, the good thing is that all the, like, the hundreds of constants you need to store all the matrices for the partial rounds, so that's all not needed anymore with the new version of Poseidon. Okay, so in a nutshell, what are the changes? Well, we add this uh, linear layer at the beginning, the ME one, uh, then we exchange all the matrices for the, for the full rounds and also for the partial rounds, uh, so two different matrices in total, and we do the round constants uh, more efficiently in the partial rounds. Um, however, some things stay the same, and that's uh, the nice thing, actually. So you can use the same round number both for Poseidon and for Poseidon 2, which means essentially that you can use the round number script of Poseidon 1, you get uh, some output for the round numbers, and you can use them also for Poseidon uh, 2. So they're the same. And yeah, also the nonlinear layers and the S-boxes and these GCD conditions, this is all the same as the original Poseidon. Okay, so something about performance. Uh, we have two tests here, one with a 255-bit um, prime and one with a 64-bit prime. And we see already for 255 bits that Poseidon, is, uh, Poseidon 2 is consistently faster. And also for the 64-bit prime, we see, for example, that we're always below these uh, uh, five uh, microseconds here. Um, and let me also emphasize here, it depends a lot on which prime field you use. So for example, if you have a prime field where multiplications can be done very, very quickly because you have an optimized version of the reduction, and then of course the performance difference is a bit, uh, is, a, is not the same. So essentially this uh, focus is very generic. And also if you move to a smaller prime, which makes you essentially increase the state size, and then the performance difference is even larger compared to the original Poseidon. So even for 32-bit primes, for example, it uh, may be very beneficial to switch to the new version. Yeah, so we can have up to four times improvement here. And the code is also available here. You see uh, the link below. All right, so um, before actually concluding the talk, let me also, besides the conclusion, let me give you also some outlook. So, well, first, first the conclusion, right? So Poseidon 2 is significantly faster than uh, Poseidon. The biggest change is actually in the linear layers. And uh, we're also working, or we, we have finished working also on a gate for Plonky 2, which essentially switches from Poseidon 1 uh, to Poseidon 2. And uh, what we found, or what we've been uh, seeing in the past, and this is now the outlook thing, is 
uh, that uh, there are many modifications also to the original Poseidon which focus on plane performance. So for example, there's this modification using the uh, circular and MDS matrices, which doesn't change the, the specification of Poseidon, but makes it a lot faster. I think uh, times two improvement, something like that, for a 16 word uh, size. So it's pretty, pretty nice. Um, and what we can learn maybe from that is that plane performance is also important. So not only circuit friendliness, but also plane performance. Uh, but with all these modifications, we are still not getting close to the traditional hash functions. So not to SHA-3, let alone SHA-2, which is even faster. Um, so the question is, of course, can we close this gap? Can we find some hash function which is both uh, circuit friendly, but also like very, very fast? And currently we're working on a successor to reinforced concrete, which also works with smaller primes. So this is called RC64, but we're also aiming for 32, 31-bit primes. And we're trying to close this gap. And yeah, well, I want to close this um, presentation also with a question, maybe, can we even reach SHA-3 like plane performance? And maybe in the future, future, maybe even SHA-2. Let's see. Thank you very much. So I think we do have time for questions. OK, we have one over here. Thank you for the presentation. It was very nice. Ah, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Uh, our team was doing uh, an implement, actually three implementations of Poseidon 2 in, in ZKX, so we were kind of digging into the paper. And uh, I think we have different questions. My question would be the, around the 4 by 4 matrix, which you use also for, for example, 8 by 8 you are using a circular extension of that. Did you look into other sizes? Whether the, so the, the paper that you've used have, have these kind of filled out, but I haven't seen any generalized results behind those. Um, so if I understood the question correctly, it was about this M4 matrix. Yeah, the M M4, which is, which is kind of, you use it also in multiplies, but, but you, you don't use, have other sizes, and even for eight, you are using this in a circular fashion. Yeah, uh, you, are okay. not, you are not using a generalized results of that to eight. Okay, ah, if you looked for alternatives there. Yeah, um, yeah. so uh, that's a good question, yeah. We did look for alternatives. Uh, the reason is that, um, and this is also closely related to lightweight cryptography, that the, the larger the state size gets, or the, the, the dimension of the matrix, the harder it gets to actually find an efficient one. Um, however, um, for example, if you are thinking about this, um, these uh, circulant MDS matrices for Poseidon, which uh, you can use for the original Poseidon and improves everything, um, you can actually also use the circulant MDS matrix for this M4 matrix. So a very famous one is the, simply the AES matrix, which is circulant MDS. So maybe instead of doing that here, you can also do like three or four, or like times two FFTs, and then you maybe, maybe you're able to even accelerate uh, this version. Yeah. But that's, that's an excellent question. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Are there any other questions? I think we would have time maybe for one more. Let's see. Well, I guess if not, then thank you so much for this talk. Thank you.